question. Well, first, I'd just like to thank everyone for coming. And uh, in regards to my family, the questions are for the media, not from them. They can ask me later. Uh, I just want to thank uh, everyone in the rider organization, uh, Craig, Jeremy, uh, Corey, for uh, giving me this great opportunity to come be, be a rider and uh, to come home. And just is such a great place and a great uh, opportunity for me. And uh, I also want to thank my family, my wife, Jenea, who's uh, Regina, is from Regina as well. And my daughter, Sawyer, will turn five here. And uh, my son, Wallace, will be able to run around here basically at the same ages that I got to do uh, when my dad worked here. So uh, that's really cool. And I hope that uh, all the opportunity that I've given, that I give it back with, uh, with results. So uh, I look forward to getting to work and, and having lots of fun here uh, in the green and white. Uh, Mark, obviously you had roots in Calgary and you were there for a long time, but what does it mean to you to, to come back here and, and, and put on the green light? I think it's, it's a great opportunity. I think once you get into coaching, uh, you kind of become somewhat what of a nomad, and I think it's a really special opportunity. Not many people get to coach uh, professionally to begin with, or let alone in the place where they grew up and they have roots in, and not only as a fan and as a, as a resident, but also like, I'm the fourth member of my family to work for the Riders. So uh, it's a really, it means it's really special to all of us. And uh, also the opportunity to work with really great people. Uh, you know, I've, I've got to know uh, Jeremy and, and Craig and, and I've worked with Kyle Carson and, uh, and obviously Corey. Uh, I mean, I believe in those people and I'm just really thankful that they believe in me. Can you take us through how this process played out for you? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of, uh, you know, looking at your phone and sitting around, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, we, and, you know, kind of bailed out there in the first round of the playoffs in Calgary. And, you know, you kind of finish your, your work uh, for that week. And then you're kind of just sitting around waiting. And uh, the coaching carousel, you know, it seems like it goes fast in three weeks, but that three weeks seems like a really long time when you're kind of involved in it. So, uh, you know, Corey reached out. He said it was looking like it was a good opportunity was going to happen. And, uh, you know, I was really excited. I was actually out for lunch with my wife. My wife is uh, back at teaching now. That's why she can't be here today. She's just off maternity leave. But uh, uh, we were out for lunch, and Corey FaceTimed. I'm like, hey, I can't FaceTime. I'm out for lunch. She's like, answer the FaceTime, right? <laughs> and I'm like, all right. And uh, I faced. He's like, we're in. And I, 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 from that moment on, me and my wife, had a, it was an emotional time. And, uh, and it's really exciting. You know, I mean, I can't wait to, you know, just hopefully – give reason for the faith that, you know, a guy like Corey had in me. Mark, can you kind of just run through those emotions you're feeling getting to come back to Regina and uh, wear the rider green as a coach? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a special thing for, uh, you know, I get to see, there's a statue of my grandpa out there, there's pictures. Uh, I walked by the picture of the 89 team, you can see my dad standing on his toes to look tall. Like, those things are pretty cool, <laughs> right? So, uh, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity, no matter where it would be in the league, uh, with, to be with the guys that uh, that are here, you know, the, the players and the coaches. But, you know, for it to be here where we're from and get to coach in the city that you're from is uh, it's pretty special. How exciting is it uh, to get a chance to really just implement your system somewhere and not come come take over if where a system was already in place? Kind well, of. I mean, it's it's challenging, you know. It's it's but it's a challenge that I'm really excited to be a part of. Uh, you know, it's not just going to be, you know, my offense or it's going to be ours. And that's as much as the other coaches that will be on staff and the players as well. And I think, you know, the most important thing you need is uh, you all have the same voice as the head guy, you know, which would be Corey. And then it's our job as, a, as assistants to continue that voice and then the voice from the coordinator play caller to the quarterback. And I think we should all speak the same language, and I'm excited to, to be a part of that. Jamie? Well, can you go through your relationship with Corey? Like, was it early beginnings as a defensive assistant in Calgary, and how has that relationship grown over the last almost 10 years? Yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, Corey was the was our nose in the, in in 2014 when I was a defensive assistant. You know, I was in charge of game breakdowns and making coffee and things like that. And uh, uh, you know, Corey is just such a, a great person and a great leader. I think he won the president's ring that year, which is a pretty big award for leadership, and not only in the locker room but the community. And uh, he's always just been a, a really good teammate. Like Corey's one of the guys, like I was just a coach, I was 24 at the time, and he was in there working out, and I, he came over to me and introduced himself. Like that's just the kind of person he is, and uh, what you see is, is that's who he is. And I'm really excited to be a part of that. And when he, uh, he got hurt in 15 really early, and he kind of still hung around and worked hard, and you could tell he was going to be knowledgeable as a player, and then in that year you knew he was going to you know, want to get into coaching, and it worked out that we had a spot open in 16. And, we hit it off right away, and you know he was—he lived in Calgary, so we were able to, you know, the the off season, you know, when nobody's in there in December or January, other than a couple guys, you get to spend some time and get to know people. And you know, he had children basically at the same age as, as our children, so they played around and they came over and hung out in the backyards and things like that. So uh, I would say we were we're 
truly friends, and I look forward to working for him. And, you know, you don't get to have many friends, you know, in, in, in the coaching business because you move all the time. But I was able to stay in touch with him, you know, fairly frequently, and uh, I really look forward to seeing him, seeing him every day. But when it comes to designing your own offense your way, how far back does this go for you writing plays? Like, does Larry have old notebooks at home of you scribbling down plays that he tried to run in the backyard or not? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm sure there, if I did something, it's probably somewhere still in the house. But, uh, uh, you know, it'll be, it, it'll, you have to continue to evolve. I, I'm very fortunate, you know, I can't be more grateful to my time in Calgary. You know, I... I was selling beer from Olson, and I got a phone call from Dave. I was sitting having lunch at my house, and uh, he's like, hey, do you want a guest coach? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, what about work? I'm like, I'll figure that out. You know what I mean? Like, I'll figure that out. If I have to take a month off work, I'll work Saturdays or something. I'm in, I'm in for the opportunity. And then, you know, a week later, even later that week, Huff called, and it was like, hey, do you want to coach linebackers? And I'm like, you know, Huff, I know I look like I might have played a different position, but I actually played quarterback, <laughs> you know. Uh, but... Uh, so then it happened, and you know, I talked to Rich Dubler, which was the initial connection. So I'm really, when talking about the offense, I'm so grateful that I got to learn from kind of a, co a coach on defense like Stubes that should be in the Hall of Fame at some time. You know what I mean? Like he's the defensive guru that there's so many different trees, and Corey would fit under that tree, right? So uh, I mean, I'm, I'm very thankful for that. And then to learn from Huff and Dave every day is, is excellent. You know, it, you, I get the Huff, those guys are, were so great that I could walk down and ask any question, and, you know, and then they would answer it truthfully. And, and try to help you grow, and you're very empowered as a coach there, and I've, I am very grateful for that. And then I got to a, a share an office with, with Dinwiddie for four years, which was a lot of fun. And I, the guy, and I love that guy, and he's been really, really great to me. And in the last couple of years with Pat, you know, the OC, Pat Delmonico, just to, to learn uh, the intricacies of the inside line play has been, uh, you know, I'm very grateful for all the tutelage. But I know this is a really long answer, but uh, I think, you know, you take what you like, which is a lot of it, and then you try to morph and do it with what your players are. And I think that, you know, if I was to sit here today and tell you what kind of offense we were going to be run, I, I wouldn't be truthful because, you, you know, it's when we're going to try to do what it is to win games, and that's taking advantage of the personnel that you have. Good. Jacob and then to Rob. Yeah, you kind of just segue into my next question. Um, just how excited are you? Obviously, there's a lot of roster turnover every year in the CFL, but how excited are you to mold and kind of scheme the offense with the guys that are already, that talent that's already in the offensive yeah. locker room? Awesome. It's good to see you, Jacob, old teammate. Uh, uh, I'm excited. I know I think that uh, there's a good foundation here, and uh, really, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to be, you know, in, in, involved with, with the rest of the staff and, uh, you know, to see what we do well. I know I think that the, you know, I was asked uh, maybe during this process somewhere that what's the, you know, the successful training camp look to, you know, it's a, it's a, at the end of training camp, do we have faith? You know, does the offense, at the end of the thing, we believe that what we're doing is right? And I think that, you know, we've got from now until whenever game one is, you know, or preseason one is to do that. And uh, I look forward to the work. It's going to be lots of work, and I'm, I'm really excited to do it. Thanks. Mark, the list of Rough Rider co offensive coordinators through the years includes Ron Lancaster at the end, tail end of his career. How neat is it to be on the same list as, as your grandpa? I mean, that's really cool. I mean, uh, the only other list I share with the Lancaster is interceptions thrown in the game and in Canada West <laughs> with Bobby. So I think it's... Uh, it's really, it's, it's really cool. I mean, the, the, the connections just continue, and it, uh, I'm sure we'll think of more, uh, especially you, because you somewhat know, or at least perceive that you know everything about the riders. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I, I think that's really cool. And I get to sit in a room where it has a picture of him in it and then his stats and everything like that. So, I mean, that's really neat. He was the player as well, I believe, at the time, right? Player, coach, you know, and then, uh, so, I, I mean, it, that's really neat. And hopefully we can, you know, can have success just like he did here. Your, your first year with Calgary, how much of it was defensive assistant and how much of it was, do you want regular or decaffeinated? <laughs> we didn't have decaf. I don't think decaf exists in the coaching world. Uh, defensive assistant was the best job ever. If, you know, if I ever got into or have a, someone that wants to coach, I think try the other side of the ball for one year. I, I don't think I would have survived on offense without it if it wasn't that for that year with Stoops. You go to Britt and then to Daryl. Congrats, by the way. Uh, just You kind of mentioned the roster you're really excited about, but in what other ways are you looking you know, to start working? Like, what areas of improvement are you most excited to get in there and work on? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, the biggest thing that I learned in Calgary is that you got to, you know, you got to win down the center. And I think that the most important guy with, is the guy with, that touches the ball every play. And I think you got to try to find a way to make him comfortable. And that's with, you know, it's, it takes, uh, you know, 13 people, maybe 14 people to protect the quarterback. And that calls, includes play calling, it includes scheme, the offensive line. You know, those guys aren't just going to be out there by themselves. So I think that, uh, 
what we have to do is, you know, start from the middle. You know, how we build the rocket ship, we used to say all the time, was you start with how are we going to protect the quarterback. And I think that, you know, you do that every week and you do that every day. And I think that's what I'm most excited for to do. Not sure if you can say this, but was it always the goal to come back and work for the Riders? I think it was always in the back of my mind because I have family here and things like that. And uh, I think in, in football, you kind of get used to uh, whoever you work for, you cheer for. You know what I mean? So, like, uh, I mean, probably shouldn't say this out loud, but I was an Edmonton fan for most of my life after Larry left here, right? So, and then I cheered for either Winnipeg, if my uncle was there, or back to Edmonton or the Thai Cats. So, you know, I've always been to, I've been to every rider game that I was in town for my whole life, uh, whether it was working for CBC or TSN or something like that. So, uh, I'm really excited to be here, uh, to be a, you know, to be a rider. And I know the other people in my family are really excited to be the riders again or to continue to go back to cheering for them. Yeah. Mark. Hey, Mark. Last year you started, I believe you started calling plays for Calgary. Did, what happened during the season and did it get frustrating? Uh, so my first, I got to call plays in uh, 2022. Uh, Dave had, had COVID. So we played at Ottawa and I, I got to do the play calling there. And it, it's just, uh, it was a great experience. And then uh, we went into last year as uh, I was the primary play caller. And, uh, you know, unfortunately it just didn't, uh, it didn't go the way that any of us thought it did. You know, I think I learned a lot. I think this time, right, sitting right here right now compared to last year, or even halfway through the season, I'm a significantly better coach. And I think I learned a lot from that experience. And I mean, I'm really grateful to get the experience. I mean, Dave is one of the best play callers in the league and in the history of the league. And he had faith in letting me do it for, you know, the first 10 or 11 games of the year. And uh, to be able to, to go through guys that, you know, Dave has called great cup winning plays and John Huffnagel who called playoff winning NFL games, right? So I think it's, uh, it was a great place to learn and I'm excited to, to be the play caller and, uh, you know, to kind of have final say. Okay. How many coaches do you plan to hire, and who's your starting quarterback? Yeah, uh, I think we're working through the staff. I know I think we're working through the staff. That's a Corey deal, you know, and I know he's uh, he had a pretty good press conference here last week, so I'd, I'll let him handle that. But uh, I'm excited for some of the guys that have came up, and I'll leave it at that, guys that I really trust and have worked with and, and have been around. So uh, starting quarterback, I think we're, we're excited that, uh, you know, Trevor's here, and as a, a young coach, I think it, you couldn't ask for a better situation than a guy like uh, who's won in this league, been successful in this league and has won in multiple different offenses and 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 uh, understands he like I'm coming from Calgary and I've been there for 10 years and I'm excited to see he's been in a whole bunch of different offenses that you know what we can take from there and, and, and build it together Thanks. kind of going off that just how important is it to have a veteran quarterback like Trevor for someone like you who's coached for a decade but really still a young coach in terms of CFL tenure. Yeah, I think anytime you have a guy that's been there and stood there, it's, it's a benefit. And, uh, you know, there's not many things you can talk to him about as a situation that he hasn't been through. And that's not only a big deal for as on the field, but it's a big deal in the meeting rooms, not only for the quarterback room, but the, the receivers as well. So there's lots of things that uh, we can lean on, that lean on there. And I know I look forward to, you know, I talked to him a couple days ago, so I really look forward to, to working alongside him and with him. And, and, you know, it'll all be extensions of each other. And you didn't want to say names, but how much input do you have into the offensive assistance and then eventually the roster on offense with Jeremy O'Day? Yeah, I mean, we haven't gotten into the roster parts yet and things like that, but I'm assuming I'll be, you know, a part of it. You know, uh, uh, the staff-wise, I, I kind of have an idea, and I talked it with Corey, you know, through the entire process. So uh, some of the names that are out there would be would be exciting to be with. And, uh, you know, it's just all about can, can you trust the guys? Will they work hard? And everyone that uh, I trust Corey as well, big time. So uh, if Corey says they're going to be good, they're going to be, and I know most of the names anyway. You've seen the statue numerous times, obviously, but did it, feel, did it feel a little different walking past it or looking at it as an employee of the team now? Yeah, it was a little bit different this morning. I actually saw, saw a guy coming into the office, and I actually ran by it to see if I could get into the building because I forgot how fast it is to get around in Regina. <laughs> I was meeting uh, Jordan here at 8.30, and we got left at 8 in my house with uh, Larry and Lana. We got here at 8.07. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I was a little bit early. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's, a, it's not many people have a family member who has a statue out in front and, uh, uh, you know, especially someone who's not only been special to our family, but the entire, really the country, the CFL. Jamie? How do you balance that with the pressure? Is there added pressure with the family history as you walk by that statue to work every day? I mean, in, in, uh, in a good way, I, and I've kind of embraced that my entire life. You know, I lived here didn't matter when I played, it was always, you know, who he is, not Lancaster's grandson. He gets an article in the paper because he's Lancaster's grandson, you know, stuff like that. So uh, I've embraced that. I'm proud of that. And I, I'm excited to, uh, I'm excited for it. I think it's an awesome thing. I mean, it's, it's you know, without that, I, I, don't, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing, right? I mean, I got to 
have the best seat in the house for my entire life on how to learn about football and quarterbacking and coaching. And uh, I'm excited to embrace that, and hopefully, you know, my kids get to hang around it. Uh, when, when Corey asked, what did you tell him about being a head coach and being under the microscope in Saskatchewan? I think it's, you know, it's truly a place that loves football, and I think it's an exciting place to work. And uh, I think, you know, in, in the CFL, there's certain jobs that, you know, everyone would love to be a part of and experience, and this is definitely, I think, at the top of the list.